I'm going to kind of show you how to position your boat by yourself. Right now the topography I'm setting up on is a super long point that runs almost 200 yards out into the river which is very 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 good structure for all fish. This one has an especially steep break to the deeper water to 70 80 feet which makes it really good for catfish. On average they will be in deeper water than other fish or can be because they can to tolerate lower oxygen levels than other fish which happens when you go deeper so generally activity periods for catfish can happen in deeper water now certain times of the year I've caught them in two three feet of water uh, fish up to 40 pounds in Tennessee so I mean I don't fish shallow water a lot I like deep water stuff and how complex it is it's kind of like a puzzle for me but this is one of my favorite areas. This is the summer, so we'll see how it goes. Basically, I'm trying to set up on where a little finger of this bar runs out. It's just like a little nudge into the channel. It's very subtle. Um, you can see it on a depth finder. I don't have one on this boat right now. It's not that I can't afford one, but I find I'm more effective without one for whatever reason, because I'm not sitting there watching TV. And, instead of fishing but I'll probably end up getting one because I need it for finding trees and rock piles and stuff on the bottom so all right I'm about on it I'm gonna throw this front anchor out I use a cinder block because it's a dollar and fifty cents and I fish some really nasty stuff on the bottom sometimes you snag them up I don't really want to continue paying seventy five dollars for anchors or however much they are so just cinder block whatever and whenever it sticks it's stuck it's not going anywhere your front anchor I generally have a hundred feet worth of uh, line on it or anchor rope because the longer line you have out or the more amount of line you had out on an anchor it makes it more stable and on this lake during the summer there's five million people I will have to say with not a lot of current in this area it can be difficult to do this anchor thing by yourself but I like the challenge basically I got it set out I'm back here on my tiller backing all that line out I don't know if I'll let all of it out because I don't want to get past where I want to fish that's probably going to be good be good so I set up on the brake line that breaks from 55 to 75 and then it's that point right there to there is like five feet of water and then it goes all the way out so in the winter you can really mess your boat up if you're dumb and go over the top of that I've seen pleasure boaters do that and just annihilate their lower unit so be careful with that stuff Know where you're going. All right, this is that. Back in swinging around. I always throw a back anchor when there's not a ton of current just to keep me stable. Oh, and I forgot that's like that. Splendid. Well, five minutes later, I got that giant knot untangled. So now we're actually getting anchored up. But it's all good. We're still straight. Current, well, what current is here? It's a super wide area of the lake, so it doesn't funnel it. Even if they are pulling the max amount of current from the dam, you still don't see a, a ton of current in these super wide areas of the lake, as opposed to the narrower sections or an outside bend. But set up this back anchor will keep the back of us pointed that way downstream which is what we want even if we get some big wakes my boat's kind of small 
but it actually makes anchoring when there's a lot of waves easier in wind because there's not a whole lot of surface area on it. Um, which is a portion why I like it. Boat positioning is way easier on a smaller boat. Now, I wouldn't go out on Gunnersville or Wheeler when there's 100,000 CFS of current and wind going the opposite way of it on this boat. But for what I do in my area of the country, this is perfect. So I'm going to start getting baited up and then uh, we'll catch some fish. Fresh skips for bait. I'm going to cut these various sizes. I've got a few double hook rigs for that. I like to make a slit to the backbone and then you can fillet down the backbone. So that exposes the meat, um, which will get a good scent trail out. And then you chunk them. I don't use that, but I'm not going to throw it in the water right now. So I'll leave because I don't want to feed fish I'm trying to catch. Um, sometimes I'll just get a big chunk like that there's that and then we'll do some various size body pieces similar to that this guy will cut a smaller section of the head off and do a bigger body chunk a lot of my biggest fish have been caught on that piece right there or this um, sometimes you'll catch fish on a smaller piece when they're inactive and in the winter their metabolism it, it seems like it goes down a little bit or you can catch bigger fish on smaller baits in the summer after the spawn uh, you can use some gigantic baits I've used a whole skipjack and caught a 10 pounder before like a big skipjack not one of the small ones and caught a 10 pound blue cat so I mean you just got to experiment with bait sizes every time you're out on the water and see what they want it's not an exact science, you kind of got to experiment with it. So we're going to see what they want this morning and then we'll uh, try to narrow down exactly what they're, they're eating and then catch more fish, basically, is what your main goal is. When I'm throwing baits out, I try to put different sizes of bait in different places. A lot of the times, your bigger baits will get eaten in the deeper water. So I'm going to put a, a fairly large chunk. You need to make sure these scales get off the point of the hook because you'll get a massive takedown drag peel and they'll just pop back up reel it back up and there'll be one of these scales on the tip of it and you'll have heartbreak it'll happen every time if you leave this, the scale on the tip and everyone's done it you just gotta make sure or try to make sure you don't do it because you don't want your heart broken sometimes You'll have a, a day of fishing where that one bite is it. One big bite. And you don't want to miss it just because of something simple. After you put in hours of work. Not really work, but time. It can seem like work sometimes. Especially catching bait when they're a pain. That can be work. But still better than working. I like leaving the clicker on. Uh, I'll lock it down, but I like leaving the clicker on because if I'm not paying attention and one uh, starts pulling drag, you hear the clicker going. Some big double hook rigs. So we'll get one of these big baits. I think I'm gonna go with that one. Take that, hook it through the nose. Take this and hook it right here. It's 
not always necessary to have a double hook rig on a bait this size, but again, I know I've talked about it before, if they grab it like that, instead of the whole thing and take off with it, you won't get hooked up. So, I just do it. Increases your chances. Now, this one we're going to send way out in the channel. There we go. That's where it drops to 75 out there. This one's in 60 something probably, this one's 50 something, and then it goes up the break. Um, I'll put a down rod on that rod on this side on the shallow end, just straight down under the boat. Um, sometimes you can pick a fish up that way, and when they hit it on a down rod, they just obliterate it normally. So that's cool. Hopefully I can get some of that on film. Make sure our drag's good. Again, when you're anchored, it's all about bait spread and accurate presentation of bait. So, get set up exactly on the spot, on the spot, and then get a big spread out. See, that one's way up there. You can generally gauge activity level of the fish too by which ones you start getting eaten on. If they're out deeper, uh, they're not super active generally, but if you start getting slammed up on the shallow side, you're about to have a, a good little while of fishing if the period's just starting. I threw all the line off that reel. So big double hook rig out there, big chunk, smaller piece, different sizes of bait all in this area. Standard chunk, I'm going to put a, a, a bigger piece up on the shallower break and then we'll stagger the other baits and then see what's up. Alright, so we got all eight rods out, right side of the boat, main channel, deep water, we threw them way out there and then these other ones we just staggered up the break. These, it is literally like two feet of water right here. So on these, it drops so quickly, the bottom, the break line, I just straight down next to the boat, down lines. So we'll have to watch the anchor line back there if we get one on that one. Um, this one will be fine because it's way up there. Uh, we'll see though. I'm probably gonna throw a Saviki rig around a little bit because I've seen some skipjack busting right there and white bass and I have really bad ADHD sometimes, so I gotta do stuff. Um, so, we'll be back whenever uh, we get a big old takedown. While I'm messing around with this topwater bait, gotta get this in. He's swimming off to the right with it. You see that? So, I'm gonna go and reel down on him because he's carrying it. Up on him, make sure it's set. I don't know if he's on there. I think he came off. Yeah, he's not on there. Well, got that out of the way early. It's been in the first. 10 minutes of having them all out though. I probably should have honestly let them have it a little bit longer. That was my fault. Got too excited. Rehook it and throw it back out there. That was deep water. Now, larger bait. So I'll just make a mental note of that. And if we get multiple within the same pattern, then that becomes more than just coincidence. Because sometimes it's very, very specific what they want. And you've just got to pay attention. Because that means more and bigger fish while you're out here. Maximize your time. Especially if you're working stuff. you got to get your money's worth, so to speak. That was my... 
my fault. Should have just kept throwing my top water until it bent all the way over. Oh well. I guess that's hooked. getting hit way up there shallow. This is a smaller fish, so I'm purposefully bringing him up slowly so he'll burp. Which means expel the air in his swim bladder so that he can swim back down. a little bigger than I thought, I think. Musky rod's like a pool cue. See how those bubbles come up? That's when they burp. It's probably good now. That one had a hit. I don't know if he's just sitting there with it in his mouth or what. A little dinky, little dinky blue cat. When you're unhooking them, the best way I found to hold them is like this. Pretty little fish. Let him go. See if we can't get his great grandpa. Be cool. Break the ice a little bit. That slime off me. You gotta start somewhere. There's one. Gosh, see, he swam with it up there, too. Where is he at? I don't even know if I have a fish on. Yes, I do. Oh, gosh. 
away from that anchor. Better fish too. So that anchor's straight down right there, and that fish was going straight for it. So I had to get him up here away from it. We're okay on that one. That one's way up that way. That guy fought way harder than his size. He needs to burp though, so I'm gonna let him go back down. I could see his belly was expanded and like looked like a basketball kinda. So I'm gonna let him just go down. Sit there for a second. Bring him back up now. I saw some bubbles come up. That's from where his Swim bladder decompressed, which is good. See, look, there's some more right there. There we go. He's blowing them. That way we can have a safe release on him. He'll go right back down. There we go. So cool. That was wild. Like, that one was way that way, and that one swam up this way, too. So it leads me to believe those other ones were catfish. I just reeled crazy quickly this time. As soon as I saw him swimming with it, I didn't wait. <sighs> that was a striper. Blowing up on a little shad. Oh, quit it. Quit it. that rod tip going that's him he's eating the bait and he's swimming up this brake line and like every single one of them's done that and that's a, a pretty large chunk Current's kicked up finally, and the bite has really picked up. I'm tighten that line down just a little bit. Let's see where he's at. You see how that rod keeps... Oof. I think they're flatheads. That's how flatheads bite. It's just a really light thing like that. And now, you see how there's weight on it? And all we can do is go for it. Yeah, see how there's all this slack in it, and I had just tightened it up, so that he's swimming with it for sure. So I'm, I'm gonna go for it. If we don't get him, it's all right. There he is. There he 
this. It's just a small fish. He's squirrely. See how it's back. The big fish is just a steady, a steady pull. And when they do head shakes, they're big. See, that's him twirling in the water down there. These little fish are eating big baits. I mean, unless he's about to surprise me, I don't think this is a big fish. I mean, it's not, though. Really fun morning out here. I'd like to get a big one though. Come on, show me some. See? Uh, just didn't have enough gumption to. Yeah. Flathead. See? Called it. That was cool. Whoa. <laughs> See, that was the perfect flathead bite. It just does that, and then they kind of sit there with it. Um, so, leads me to believe all those other bites I had where they swim off upstream were flatheads. It's a double. Man, this guy's got some sharp teeth. Beautiful fish. These are my favorite catfish. I like uh, fishing for the big blues because it can be super, super action packed and you can catch a lot of them and they're huge. But the flatheads are just so cool. <laughs> he was green. So fun. Big fish. I'm playing around with this top water. It's spinning the boat around. It's fun doing this out of a little tin boat. You just get pulled around. This fish has some weight. Just got bit by me. Butter. Come on up here. It's not really doing a whole lot of anything. There we go. 
yeah, a little bit of drag. There's some bigger bubbles right there. This may be a good fish, guys. It's on one of those hand sized chunks of skipjack. That's a nice drag of a blue. Oh, a little bit better of a blue. Very nice. Not huge. But a good fish, fun fight. There we go. Nice. Post spawn, you can see that spawn works on. I don't think I need to lift for this guy. So that was on a very large piece of bait. I mean, relatively speaking. So, I mean... That's the second one that's been on a bigger piece out in deep water. Yeah, I'm just gonna net him. I don't wanna get my hand torn up again. Fun fish. Heck yeah. Post spawn, you can still see the spawn marks on that guy too. Alright, so we're gonna release this guy now. Got one messing with this. It's a big double hook rig bait. Let's see if we can get him. Oh man. Uh, he's hooked, but I don't know how good he is. Guess we'll find out. That was a whole skipjack. One of the smaller seven to nine inch ones. So we'll see. Hopefully it decides to grow we get straight up and down with it. Having a hard time getting a big bite, but we're catching a lot of fish, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, that guy ate a whole skipjack. Um, may have to move. Big bait sometimes equals big fish, but sometimes it also equals dinks. That one didn't have a mark on it. See, dude. Some rods up to go in, and there's a dang fish on this one. That feels like a pretty good one. I almost guarantee this is a flathead. He's pulling his boat around.
some blue cat. No, it is a flathead. <laughs> Who's just sitting there with it? I reeled. You can see all my rods are up. I was moving spots. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. I was like, wait. This has a peach on it. How about that? That's wild. What a pretty fish. I love flatheads. It's just sitting there with it. About that. Nice flathead, super dark colors on them. Do my fighting with these. Stab myself. Alright, bud. Gonna be the last fish of the day for me. I'm getting burnt. Yeah, not big. Not big at all. He is in this line. This is the OG Warrior Cat. It's their first prototype that I've had for forever and I have still managed not to break it. And as you can see, it is well used. I don't even know how many thousands of pounds of stripers and catfish and everything else I've caught on this thing. No blue cat. Little blue cat. Well, it doesn't appear as if he's in that line. Let's just set him there for a second. Wait. It. Chill out. Maybe he just came out of it. Charlie Brown circle hook, corner of the mouth or bottom of the lip. That little thing. Here's the time to leave. I'm hungry. Ow. Two million dollar house and blue cat. All good. 
Well, that's gonna cut it for the day. I'm out of bait. I don't feel like moving spots again. I'm hungry. Had fun. Hope you learned something. Saw some cool fish. We'll catch you later.